everybody. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Facebook Live Friday with Pro World. I'm Danielle. I'm Jessica. I'm Jesse. And we are here to talk about dun 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 mm -hmm. our 3D vacuum press. This is probably one of the most <laughs> um maybe confusing, I want to say, yeah. Yeah. or uh, kind of perplexing item that we have for sale. Uh, heat presses, everyone's got that. Printers, no problem. Cutters, all right, not a big deal. A couple of different options. But the 3D vacuum press, everybody's like, I want to know more about it. I want it, but I don't know how it works. So let's take some of that question out of it for you. We are going to go ahead and press well, not really press, but we're going to print on a cell phone case, one of our three-dimensional cell phone cases, uh, so that way you can see how it works. Then we're going to shut it off and kind of show you everything else, so that way it's not too hot, because it is hot. That's why I'm holding it very close, because it's cold <laughs> up here. And just remember, this is like, it's like a, a glorified, I'd like just to call it a glorified oven, so it's got all the conveniences of an oven. Um, you can set the time, the temperature, but you also have a vacuum feature. So that allows you to print these like three dimensional items, shot glasses, uh, tumblers, your rock slates, all within this unit. So we're gonna show you how. Do we have any questions? I'm, I got stuck with some. No, is everyone saying hi? I'm not saying I love this machine. Not very good directions, times, and temps for 3D press. Like anything else, this does have a learning curve, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be fine. So the first thing that we're gonna do when we work with the 3D vacuum press, use your gloves, number one. That's like a safety safety tip 101 for the day. Use your gloves. Mm -hmm. All right, you're gonna have to watch out, Jess. Ooh. Ooh. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so we're gonna use this top tray. We're gonna, this is our, our mold for our cell phone case. We are gonna put that right in here. I personally like to heat up the mold before using it. And I just snapped the, there we go. I like to heat up the mold. I like it just to get a little bit warm so it's not freezing cold because, you know, it came from our warehouse, which is a little chilly sometimes. But this will at least, at least give my cell phone a chance to, or give my cell phone case a chance to get heated up, so that way when I go to print it, it will print properly for me. Just a couple minutes. I just don't want to burn myself in the meantime. Okay. Use caution. It's very, very hot. All right. Now, in order to use this, we put the three-dimensional case right on top so we're connected now I printed out a whole big sheet I don't need all this so I'm gonna trim it down I just need enough to cover my case but not to be ridiculous so we'll just trim it down to about here actually I want to trim this off at the bottom All right, so anybody that has there, I know uh, Butch had made a comment that he loves using it. He thinks that it gets better quality. Um, so anybody that has a 3D vacuum press and, you know, wants to say how great it is, please make sure you comment. If anybody that has a 3D vacuum press and is still sitting in their closet because they don't know how to use it, this is the perfect chance. Or anybody that wishes they had one and was like, oh, let's see how this works. You know, let us know. Give us your comments. The item behind the shot glass. You know what? Maybe I'm going to zoom in yeah. so that they can see um, see what's going see what's on here when we do the vacuum. And it looks like they're asking questions about what's going on over here. Oh, these are just products just that we've already that we've printed. Done. Okay. So Jess is going to kind of zoom in here and I'm going to show you uh, just how to adjust the time. We're going to go back and I'm going to show you how to start it off. But for this, we just hit time setting. We're going to drop it down to about seven and a half minutes. That's good enough. Time again. We have both heating lights on, which is super important. I'm going to show you the difference in a minute after we press this. 
the main reason we're pressing this is just to show you how it works, how it functions, and then we're going to go back and show you. All right. We're going to hit the vacuum press to get the vacuum going, and you can see it's sucking all the air out to make our cell phone case nice and tight. And then I always just go in and kind of push my corners down to make sure that it gets my edges. And we're good. And timing. All right, now we're gonna wait seven minutes. We're gonna show you other things in the meantime though, because seven minutes is a long time to wait. All right, the other things that you can do with the 3D backing press that go in this top tray, which is an amazing little top tray because it has that little vacuum feature. But this was a rock slate that uh, we printed in this. You can print the rock slate perfectly fine with a heat press. But Jess, if you want to zoom in, but you'll only get these wonderful edges, like the actual print to go on the edges when you use the 3D vacuum press. Because when you vacuum it, it sucks the print all the way down into all these little grooves so you get that really nice finished quality so you won't have any of like the white paint that's something that your heat press cannot do so that's a really good feature for your rock slates especially if you know you think rock slates are going to be kind of like your number one seller this is the unit to get for that because you're going to have a really nice finished product when you finish now uh, other items that we have uh, to kind of make your life easier with this 3D vacuum press are, are the molds. So in order to use the vacuum feature for most, well, in order to print on most of the products, you need a mold. So whether it's a tumbler wrap, a shot glass mold, a cell phone case mold, or even these, um, the wraps that go around the mug, you need something that will allow you to really kind of vacuum this in and, and get it to work for you. So these all kind of hook to this little, there's like a tube on the inside. So but we'll show you that when this is all done. I saw you tempted to open it to show yeah, the tube. But we won't do it yet. <laughs> John, the best affordable sublimation printer we carry is the Virtuoso SG400. And we do have it in the starter package. So you get your ink, you get your um, paper, you get the software and the printer, so check that out. And one more person. Oh, Judy. She said, what is this heat pressure using? We're using a 3D sublimation vacuum heat press. And you can kind of hear it going. How oh much is gosh. this press? $7.95? $7.95. Thank you, Nathan, for the link. Hopefully you don't get spammed. <laughs> a lot of people okay. saying they need this. Welcome to the live, Anthony. Yeah, I mean, you can definitely do a lot of stuff with this. It's it's very helpful. Like, as you can see, like that, the one little cell phone case, I could fit probably about four very comfortably. Um, you do need a different mold or another mold for each case that you do, but it does allow you to kind of fill this thing up and get it going. Dawn says it's worth every penny, and Nate says that he's going to post as long as he can. <laughs> Hi, what's the green mold for? Oh, that's for um, the mugs. So pretend I have a print on here um, or a, pa a piece of paper. You simply make sure that you can see me without all this other stuff in my way. You place it here. So you have your, your oh, well, we'll just fake it. So if this was gonna be my print, I've taped it. I knew that wasn't gonna hang in there. <laughs> All right, you place it in the middle, and then you get your your buckle, squeeze, your snap, and you're good. So this holds on that paper for you. So then, when you put it in your your press, you're gonna put it at the bottom and upside down, and then that's it goes in the bottom part of the unit. So it doesn't need that vacuum tray at the top. We take that out, and we put this at the bottom. But that, but you could do that with this, the latte, this is the latte wrap, and then the 15 ounce wrap. Mm -hmm. Anita says, hi ladies, looking great. Hi. McCrancy. Um, I got my edges fine on a flat press, Lenora said. There is a method and a wink, so email oh, us that method with the wink yes. back. <laughs> Service at ProRoadInc.com. Wink, wink. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Mary Ann says she's so excited. She's only 15 miles away from us. Awesome. Ooh, that's great because we do offer pickup orders. But you have to place the order first. We have about three minutes left, um, so just to kind of give everybody an idea. What kind of print paper are you using? So this is the 3D sublimation vacuum press, so it oh. works in conjunction with the 3D sublimation printer. Aline. I mean 3D sublimation printer. The virtuoso sublimation printer. So we're using um, text print our paper with um, sublijet ink. Elaine, this, uh, this molds for the tumbler. So if you have like a tumbler, a travel mug, um, you know, it, it actually slides right in here upside down. It goes, we use it for our <laughs> water canteens since they don't have a wrap for this. So we kind of just squish it in. <sighs> don't, don't worry about this other piece that's in there. And uh, cause this actually, it'll kind of suction into it, but that's okay. <laughs> And, uh, so don't be alarmed when you hear a loud. You gotta, you gotta work with what you got, right? We want to do your canteens in here, so this is how it's done. Greg and says, "How long after new phone comes out are the molds available?" Well, we just got the iPhone X case, but no mold. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so it does take a, a couple months to get them. Um, we're gonna go back out and try and locate the mold, so that way we can have the X phone X iPhone, that's so not what I said, the iPhone <laughs> X uh, case on the website and have, have that be available. But this is the this is how you do the water canteen. You're going to hook that into the, the tubing and then it just kind of sucks this all in. We'll, we'll show you though. We'll, so you can kind of see that, that going. But then it says, can you show the shot glass wrap? Again, I missed the beginning. This is a shot glass wrap. It's kind of weird looking, um, but you can fit lots of shot glasses in there. And you just, you wrap your shot glass with paper and slide it right in. And then when you have that all filled up or not even all filled up, you could put however many you want in there. You put this lid on and you'll see all of them contain this little like connection and I'll, we'll show you how to do that connection piece. And then it's ready for the 3D vacuum press. And it looks like we're coming upon time to pull this baby out. 35 seconds. Nicole says there are wraps for the water bottles. Not see. something that we've gotten in, but we can look. We can look into it. Okay. Let's see how I show the shot. Glass. Okay. The Linda, we got her. Which says it's great for the sports bottles. No chance of crushing them, like in the clamp press. Like oh, no, I'm going back up. <laughs> oh, just okay. in case we oh, missed any. Jess is getting these comments, and we are not over here on this side. Oh, oh, we're done. I'm used to like scrolling up just in case they come too fast and we miss somebody. So yeah. if we do right. skip over you, you we're see, trying it to get to you. Slowly is like releasing. So we'll just hit the timing button to stop that beeping noise. back in there it's so hot and we are done perfectly printed cell phone case very nice very easy simple to do so we're gonna put this aside I am going to I'm gonna power this off just so you can see it from the start so power off okay so let's start from the beginning <laughs> Because we wanted to show you that, you know, this is how you do it. This is what works. Um, but a lot of people do have a good question of, I just got my 3D vacuum press and I don't know what I'm doing with it. So pretend we just got this press. We unboxed it and here it is sitting on our counter. There is a button on the side that you're going to turn on. That will get you to this spot. You're going to do your time setting. There you go. Get, get you the power so you can get Celsius and um, your time. They have like a, a date counter on here. I don't know. I don't know why, but we don't need to know the date and neither does this. Um, so your time setting, hit that button and that will allow you to change it up or down, whatever you need and hit time again to set. Temperature, most things need to be done at 200 degrees. So we're fine. 200 degrees Celsius this is. This isn't a Fahrenheit system. 
Now, this is like the most important thing and the most often missed, the heating light. Pushing it once, that will get one, you can hear it, one unit, one heating unit on. Pushing it twice though, gets both heating units on. You need two. The only way this works is if both are on. And especially when you do mugs, the, the temperature that you need and required requires the two lights to be on. So don't ever do anything with one, you need both. This is your vacuum button when you have the top tray in, and we have, we've already seen that the top tray working. Um, but we're gonna show you now how to use these other things. So, this was the top tray. When we lift it up, this is still hot, so bear with me. You have, oh, there was a mold right back here that I totally missed. All right, um, this tubing that connects from the bottom of the unit and it connects to the top tray. That's how the connection happens for this to be a vacuum. We're gonna take this off. It's down here. Oh, so I was feeling the heat from here. That's how hot that thing I was. <laughs> super hot. Okay, now, when you do with uh, mugs or anything else, you just kind of lay that in there. Our mug, remember we just said upside down, no, yes, upside down, put it in the unit, and that's all you have to do. I personally like to use the vacuum button, but you don't need to. So uh, you can either push it or not push it, and then you just start your timer. All right, so that's, that's how you set that one up. The same is gonna go with um, with your 15 ounce, except you take this out. The 50, oh no, you leave this in, sorry, because we did a different way. Okay. You have to kind of, let me see here. Do we have any questions? Um, Nicole says, can we carry multi wraps? I like to do several mugs and et cetera at once. Um, Nicole, if you see something that we do not carry, you can always email, email us in a link or, you know, ask us the question of if that's something we can get and we'll check with our suppliers. Our email address is service at ProWorldInc, and that's INC dot com. Okay. All right, now, the 15-ounce mugs, they are too tall for the unit with the tray in or out. See, it doesn't close right. So... When you have the wrap on, of course, this, it all has to be done with a wrap, but I'm just kind of showing you. We just lay it on the side. Close it. Halfway through the time, open it up, flip it around, close it again. <laughs> <laughs> Super simple. But that will let you do the larger mugs in the unit. <laughs> okay, now, we said we would show you, this is our water canteen in here. You connect the tubing, hit your vacuum, and it just squeezes that all together. So that's perfect. You leave that in there, close it, set your time, you're good to go. Same thing for the shot glass. We have our little shot glass in here. So you'll see it will suck the life out of everything else, but leave that <laughs> one area open. So we're going to vacuum, see, we have our one lonely little shot glass in there. Close it, do your time, and that'll be done. Let's turn off our vacuum. What else do we have to show here? Is that, is that it? We can answer a couple questions. That looks like that's it for that. Okay, Sandy said, is the virtual so ready to go right out of the box? Is there something I need to do, like the filter thing first? Um, they're ready to go besides setting up your software. Um, you just would go to sawgrassinc.com and it'll be very clear instructions on, you know, click here to download software, click here to register the product if this is your first time and they'll walk you through it step by step. If you have any issues, you can always give us a call. Um, Butch says, only maintenance is to check the water separator bowl in the back from the vacuum pump. Thank you, Butch. I knew <laughs> I forgot something. But you use it often. How often do you change? Do you do like do you swap it out? Like we don't use ours that often, so 
we only check it like once every three months maybe. But I'm curious to see somebody that uses it all the time what they how often. Butch also said a good tip. I always turn on the vacuum pump because it also removes what little smoke from inside when baking. So when you open up you don't get a face full of smoke and fumes. Oh. Judy says, I saw somebody write something about water. Where do you put the water in? The water builds up from the condensation of just the, vacuuming. And it goes in the in back. The unit. It's too hot to turn the unit yeah. around. But it's like a little bulb, right? Yeah, it's it's kind of like it shows thing. it. Yeah, it shows it on on your instruction booklet that you get. But there's like two screws that are back here that you kind of need to. Oh, it actually shows you like how to replace it. There's like a sticker on the back. But um, like please periodic replacement um but it there's two screws that you kind of undo then you take that that part off and then you're able to get into the unit to to clean that out and to empty it butch says he does it once every three bakes oh Wes says do you have to smooth out the creases on the molds i personally do um like when we did the water canteen i i find where my paper kind of was taped and then I just as it's pulling the air out I kind of hold it like this so that way it'll be nice and smooth and in it and it'll only gather in one spot so personal opinion yes I, I would make that extra effort to kind of smooth the mold because you don't want to wait eight minutes and then find oh if I only smooth out that crease it would be perfect so yes I, I would recommend smoothing it out Okay, and I think that's everybody. All right. Any other questions? Doesn't seem no. like it. All no. right. Well, thank you for joining us. Hopefully we answered all your questions about the 3D vacuum press because it is a questionable unit sometimes. We do get quite a few questions that come in regarding what to use or what, what products to use in it, how to use it, how it works. So hopefully this answers some questions and you know, other Facebooks Live will kind of focus on one product and print it in here. Um, this was kind of like an overview just so you can see, number one, that it works, and number two, all the things you can do in it. So hopefully that helped. And if you have any questions, of course, we are always here. And you can always email us at service at proworldinc.com. And we're good? All right. All right, so check out our Facebook feed. It'll be in our video section. And this will be there forever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for watching, everybody.